Okay, let's start with the class of science. Measuring air pressure in the one direction and the speed. That is the topic for today, class. So right now, just uh, copy the topic. And at the end, we're going to copy. Now, if you have your book with you, it's going to be better because we're going to read the information that it's on the book about this, this topic. How can we measure the air pressure, the wind direction, and the speed? We use different tools to measure that class. Now, take a look at this picture. Look at this picture. Look at this picture. What is that? What is this? You see these pictures? Yes. These pictures, they are helpful to measure the air, the wind direction and the speed class. So today we're going to learn about these three objects, these three objects that we can use then and how they are used. Do you know what is this? Do you know what is this? So you see here this picture, Valerie? You can, yeah. you can, you can put the topic in the, in the chat, please. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to write on the chat. Just hold on. What is this class? Pressure, air, pressure, wind, direction, and speed. That's a clock. A clock? This, oh. the, this is a clock? You see the hours oh. here? Oh. Ah, I know that when the, a climate, oh. when it's sunny, it's a marca sunny. Okay, you see here, it's not a clock. It looks like an old clock, but it's not a clock. You see, we don't have clock. many hours. We don't have 29 hours, so it's not a clock class. It looks like a clock, but it's not a clock. So it's a barometer, a barometer class. What is a barometer? Do you know what is a barometer? Eh, que mide el tiempo. Eh, donde estamos. If it is sunny or rainy, I think. Because you see those pictures, you think yeah. that it's for that. Okay, yes, it might be. Look here. This, you see, it might tells you about how is the weather. Okay, Gabriela, thank you. And here, it's information has the mercury, atmospheric pressure, and there is a mercury that is a liquid, liquid, and this liquid you see, it's going up and up and up to see the level of the pressure. So you see the mercury. This is a glass top, and the beaker. Now we're going to read page C fourteen. C fourteen is the information about measuring the air pressure. So let's start with the measuring air pressure. So first we have the information. What is a barometer? A barometer class in the glossary says it's a tool that measures the air pressure. So I that have to copy that glossary. No, you don't have to copy. Right now, you don't have to copy. Barometer class, it's a tool that measures the air. Don't forget this. It measures the air pressure. And you see here how the drawing shows, how this drawing shows that mercury barometer works. That is the same picture of the previous one. That is the pressure with the air. There is a pressure of the mercury. And with this, the mercury that is a liquid, liquid is going to be up and up and up to say the amount of the air pressure. So this is one way to represent the barometer. This is another way. It can be like this, like a clock that you see. The scale on this barometer shows the air pressure in millimeters millibars and inches. So it has the, the same function of the previous picture, but the representation is different, but it's the same, a barometer class. So now let's read this, this part. Let's see, Lucia, help me to read this information, please. Air pressure can be measured yeah, using two color a barometer, one type of Barometer is made of hollow tube that is closed at one end and open at the other end. That, that tube is filled with mercury. Then the tube is turning upside down in a dish of mercury. Notice in the picture that the mercury in the tube has moved it down. It no longer feels that too. Air pressure on the mercury in the 
This affects the level of mercury in the tooth. When air pressure gets higher, it causes the mercury to rise in the tooth. When air pressure gets lower, some of mercury in the tooth falls back down into the fish dish. Another type of bar barometer is a circular cell in a display box uh, show below. The outside of the box moves this light has air pressure change. It is connected to a screen that moves a pointer on the dial. As the air pressure gets lower, the pointer moves to a lower number on the dial. When the air pressure gets higher, the pointer, pointer moves to a higher number on the dial. Excellent. Thank you so much, Lucia. So it's the same. Look, the barometer, we have two ways to represent it on their words. Number one, that it's, you see the tube, there is a tube, a mercury in the tube. And so it's going to be moving, moving up or down the mercury according to the level that is the, the according to the air pressure. And the other representation is like this, like you say that the plot, the circular diet. And it says that it's going to be uh, like marking or showing the air pressure on the dial. As you see here, it's going to be pointing, pointed the number. So if you see a number like the previous picture, I'm going to show you one more time. In this case, it shows you the pointer is on four and two. So it says inch. So the representation is going to tell you that the air pressure, how is the air? How is the air in that, in that moment, the air pressure? Now, number two, we have another tool that we use. Number one is measure the air pressure. Number two, it's measuring the wind direction and the speed. So the wind direction, it's used by a wind vane. Look at this, the wind vane, it's a tool that shows the wind direction. This is a wind vane class. The tail on this wine vein swims away from the wine and an arrow points toward the wind. So this is what we're going to create next class of, of science with all the material is because we're going to create one of this class. Next class of science, we're going to create a wine vein using the materials. Now, let's find it out. Let's find out more information about the wine vein. So let's see, Isabella, help me to read Isabella, measuring the wind direction. Even though wine is invisible, you can tell its direction by watching things move. You can see the direction that a flag moves or that trees bend in the wind. You can even get a quick idea of the wind's direction by wetting your finger and holding it up. Your finger will feel cooler on the side the wind is blowing from. For a more exciting measurement of the wind's direction, scientists use a wind vane. A wind vane rotates on top of a, of a pole. It has a tail that can be pushed by the wind. The tail of the vane swings away from the wind. An arrow on the opposite end of the vein points into the wind. Some wind veins have markers or crossbars showing the four main directions, north, south, east, and west. Wind veins are one of the oldest tools for observing weather. A wind sock, such as the one is in the picture, shows wind direction. A wine sucks also gives a good idea of how fast the wine is flowing. If the rock stands straight out, out, the wine is blowing fast and strong. If the wine suck barely lives in the breeze, the wine force is quite low. Airports often have wine sucks set up so that pilots can tell the direction and strength of the wine. Excellent, good job. So you see, this is the other tool, the wine vein. The wine vein that we're going to create, you see the two representations, how it looks, the one that we can create at, 
at home is this one. Some people have wine socks such as this one hanging near their homes. You see, some people, they can have it. And with this, they know the directions. If it is on the north, from the south, or the east, of the west, the, the air coming, the direction, the one direction, sorry. So this is the second tool class. This is the second tool in this here. It's just describing how it works. Now, number three. Now, let's talk about the anemometer. It's a tool that measures the wine speed. Remember the number one is the wine direction. And the speed is used a NOR tool. This is the tool that it's used. So help me to read this slide. Uh, um, let's see, Valerie. Read this slide, Valerie. A anem what what why all this an this information an anemometer an anemometer has the of four cups attached to the top of a pole. The cups are often shaped like small hollow balls that are cut in half. As the wind blows, it pushes the cups and causes and causes this part of the that is changed to with 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 speed by gears similar to the speed the motor of an automobile. When the wind blows. Fast, the animator spins very fast. Animators are often hooked up electrically to a steel that shows the wind speed. Thank you so much, Valerie. So you see here is a representation of the three tabs of an animometer spins faster than the wind spins increase. You see? as the wind, so this is just for the speed. If it's going to be fast, if there is a, uh, more wind, but if no, it's going to be slowly. So this is just to check. So these anemometers are usually placed high above on the roof or at top of the mass of the boat. Sometimes anemometers are connected to the wine veins. So you see some of them, they are connected to the wine veins to check that direction and also the speed because the wine vein is just for direction. But for a speed is the anemometer. Now, here I have a video class. Let's see, yes, we have time. The video, let me share the sound. So pay attention to this video class, the weather tools. Hello friends. Today, we are going to talk about how to measure weather and Okay, yes, copy this, right? Yes, there were the videos. Now let's copy these three questions and these three answers also about the topic of today. Here you have the topic, Valerie. Uh, sorry, I was missing to send through the chat, but here is the topic. So you can copy the topic for here. Questions and the answers. Want to share questions and answers. So in this minutes that we have, we can copy questions and answer these five questions. Uh, sorry, these three questions and three answers. And remember that in science, you don't have homework, but your homework is to have just ready the materials for next class of science, because that is going to be the class we're going to uh, to work on this in like a science lab. So if you don't have the materials. You are going to be connected but doing anything. So please have ready the materials with you next class of science. So now copy these three questions, answer the following questions. The number one, what causes wind is caused by the air flowing. Okay, this is taken from the book from an area of high pressure to an area of a low pressure and also from the videos. How is the air pressure measured? Remember that we use that tool, that it was number two, tool number one. It can be measured with using that barometer. And how do scientists measure the direction and the speed of the wind? So you use uh, the wind vein in the, uh, and also they use the anemometer to measure the wind speed. This is the, the answer of number three, that the materials, uh, sorry, the tools that we see today, these three tools.
we have to upload this to Schoology. No, you have to copy this. Yes, yeah, for a copy in here, the information. I'm going to take the attendance to see who is connected in science today. Ana, Andre, and Camila. Present. Present. Ana Flores. No, it's not here. Gabriela, Isabel, and Chiara. Present. Present. Lucia, me, and Rebecca. Present. Present. Rosa, Valerie, and Sian. Present. Present. Okay, good job. Sian. No. Alberto, Dani, and Fernando. Present. Present. Dani Giron. Hermes, Joshua, and Caler. Present. Present. Okay, perfect. Marcelo, Santiago Hernández, and Santiago. Present. Mm? Santiago Hernández Piayos. Santiago Chávez. Three minutes, three minutes to finish class. Okay. So copy these three questions. At the end. You are in the last one, Lucia. Okay. I finished, Miss. Okay. If you finish, you are dismissed. You can disconnect. Bye bye. See you next class. See you later. I finished me. I finished me. Okay. Thank you, Yoshua. Bye bye. Bye, please. Bye, Valerie. Bye bye, Galer.